once again i welcome you all to the another session of uh, my scheduled classes and uh, you could see now on your screen i have just continued with the presentation that i started yesterday so students presently we are dealing with a brief history of uh, indian writing in english part 1 we have completed yesterday and of course now i would like to continue with the leftover part over here and now you will have another author contributing to the realm of indian writing in english that is shashi tharoor probably you might have seen this uh, person on the television screen for several number of times he is active in politics also so shashi tharoor uh, has written a novel and he is the great indian novel published in 1989 it mainly talks about the various aspects of indian ethos as such actually he follows a storytelling technique adopted in the mahabharata and he has also drawn several concepts related to time constraints and utilization of backward forward technique uh, that is also derived by him from the mahabharata in fact uh, he, uh, he worked as an uh, un official and lived abroad of course for a long period of time and he got a vantage point that helps him to construct an objective indianness so his literary contributions are very specific in this regard then we have another author vikram chandra who shuffles between india and united states of america and he has also received international critical acclaim for his first novel which is titled as red earth and pouring rain which was published in 1995 and he also published a collection of short stories titled as love and longing in bombay it was published in 1997 vikram a chandra is a renowned journalist and the author of the srinagar conspiracy this book he published in 2000 and a domini now we have another couple of writers who are constantly contributing in the 21st century that is the present century you have suketu mehta currently based in the united states of america and he has authored the book maximum city published in 2004 it is an autobiographical account of his experiences in the city of mumbai then you have arvind adiga he received the man booker prize for his debut novel the white tiger in 2008 now i am going to talk about a very prominent 21st century author as soon as you saw this image on the screen you might have identified and that is arundhati roy actually among the recent writers in india we have arundhati roy and uh, david davider who have shown a direction towards the contextuality and rootedness in their writings more particularly arundhati roy who is a trained architect and the 1997 booker prize winner for her book the god of small things usually she calls herself a home grown writer her award winning book that is the god of small things is set in the immensely physical landscape of kerala 
similarly if you see the writings of david davider who also sets the physical ambience of tamil nadu in his book the house of blue mangoes when you compare arundhati roy and david in their writings you will realize that geography and politics are the integral parts of their narratives so here you have another author who also contributes in the present century in his novel lament of mohini published in 2000 shri kumar wama touches upon the unique matriarchal system and the sambandham system that is relationship system of marriage as he writes about the nambudris and the aristocrats of kerala so if you see there is a huge list of authors those who are constantly contributing to the realm of indian writing in english here you have another important author writing uh, in the present century and he also contributed in the last century that is no one but arnab jain dekha in fact he is a trained engineer and a jurist but writes about both physical and eternal existentialism on the banks of the mighty brahmaputra river he co-authored books of poetry with british poet novelist tess joycey appropriately titled a stanza of sunlight on the banks of brahmaputra it was published in 1983 he also published from both india and uh, britain in 2009 and that evokes the spirit of the flowing nature of life his most recent book titled as brahmaputra and beyond linking assam to the world published in 2015 made a conscious effort to connect to a world divided by racial geographic linguistic cultural and political prejudices in particular his highly acclaimed short story collection titled as the mexican sweetheart and other stories published in 2002 was another landmark in this jan of writing here you have another important woman author janavi barua presently based in bangalore but basically from assam and she has set her critically acclaimed collection of short stories titled as next door on the social scenario in assam with insurgency as the background her other writings are rebirth under tow and boo now one more author i would like to discuss as far as indian writing in english fiction and novels are concerned the stories and novels of ratan lal basu who always reflects the conditions of the tribal people and the hill side people of the west bengal and the adjacent states of sikkim bhutan and nepal if you minutely study the writings of ratan lal basu you will realize that many of his short stories reflect the political turmoil of west bengal since the naxalite movement started in the 1970s his stories blue are the far off mountains the first rain and the magic marble glorify purity of love are some of the very remarkable stories written by him his novel orion and the divine tree is the story of a tribal and his love for an age old tree when we compare 
Ratanlal Basu, generally we do remember Hemingway. In Hemingway style language, this author takes the reader into the dreamland of nature and people who are inoxorably associated with nature. So if you see, we have been talking about one of the jars of literature that is fiction and novels but having a special focus on Indian writing in English. So dear students, now I am going to talk on the another genre of literature that is drama or plays. I hope you still remember in the last year that is in BA first year of the English we started discussing about plays that is English drama or British drama and we have studied in detail how this drama as a jar of literature came into existence. So you need to remember a few more things about the British drama and some of them may be well connected with uh, Indian writing in English as a matter of fact. So let us see now what is this uh, drama as a realm of literature with a special reference to Indian writing in English. As you know, now I am not going to define drama or the features of drama or, and how this came into existence and all in general about the British concept or British theory of drama. But my focus will be of course Indian writing in English and the background which is related to. So as you know drama is a very powerful and influential medium in English literature and of course it is equally important and influential in Indian writing in English. This has the audio visual medium of expression and that's why it is more appealing and effective compared to the other jars of literature. Similarly, it is truthful and mimetic representation of human life with the combination of real, fictional, art and reality. It also represents the pictures and the characters within the dimensions of space and time. It basically combines the good qualities of usual arts and the narrative poetry. Actually, drama is a kind of narrative which is made available to the audience in the dialogic form and that dialogic presentation and representation makes it more and more effective. Now, Coming down the line to talk about Indian drama, I hope this particular slide will give you a comprehensive idea about Indian writing in English with a special focus on English drama written in India by the Indians. Indian drama has of course a long history from the ancient times. It starts from the Sanskrit plays and the Indian theory of drama preserved in Natya Shastra probably this Sanskrit word or Marathi word you might have heard. The older text of the theory of drama, not the Shastra. So if at all you happen to read this book, you will realize that the entire history of not the Shastra, that is drama, is presented over there. And all the know-how of, all the dimensions, all the aspects related to drama are also discussed over there. But that is the typical Indian context. So it says that the drama is a divine origin. If you happen to refer to the Natya Shastra in Sanskrit, you will realize that this book says that the drama is a divine origin and it is connected to the sacred Vedas. So thus the starting of the Indian drama finds its root in the Vedic period. The well-known ancient dramatists are Ashwaghosh, 
शुद्र का भाषा कालिदासा भावभूत हर्षा विशाखदत्ता एंड सो ऑन सो देर आर अ नंबर ऑफ राइटर्स हु रोट संस्कृत प्लेज नाउ लेट एस जस्ट टॉक अबाउट few more aspects related to sanskrit drama as such in sanskrit the dramas we find tragedies comedies historical plays and so on and so on so i'll just mention a few of them and then switch over to indian writing in english and the other contributors let us talk about the tragedy first you have urubhanga the tragedy written in sanskrit the example of romances is uh, abhijana shakuntalam the historical play like uh, mudra rakshasas you know it's very difficult to pronounce these are the sanskrit terms and these are the very well known vedic plays i would say the sanskrit literature itself is a very vast area of study but when you refer to these uh, tragedies romances historical plays and other plays as well i think we need to segregate or we need to classify uh, the sanskrit literature or particularly the plays into different categories but we will limit ourselves to the dramas only or the sanskrit literature in particular only so when we study sanskrit literature this can be classified into two categories actually category 1 drishya drishya means that can be seen and category 2 shravya shravya means something can be heard or that can be heard so here we have a very clear distinction between the uh, sanskrit literature that is drishya literature and shravya literature and this drama as a jar of literature comes in the category of drishya drama is a is considered under the broad concept of rupaka actually because these are the references that i am you know of course doing from sanskrit literature as such and here you have the meaning of rupaka also rupaka is a sanskrit term in sanskrit rupaka stands for the depiction of human life in different aspects and they are represented by the actors in the form of drama so this is the meaning of rupaka as such so after knowing in general about the sanskrit literature more particularly sanskrit drama i'll slowly move towards indian writing in english and the contributors to the realm of drama so here we have another slide that will give you a very clear picture of the beginning of drama as far as indian writers are concerned the indian english drama began in the 18th century when the british empire came and strengthened its political power in india so i am i am just around the year like uh, 1857 or so and also uh, you know a few years back that is the 18th century so here uh, you need to go back to the pages of history and you will remember one very important name krishna mohan banerji who has written or who has published the first drama uh, in 1813 and that was titled as the persecuted this particular play was uh, mainly associated with a social context so we can say that it is a social play in which the author tries to present the conflict between the east and the west so try to understand the theme of this play also it was mainly dealing with the conflict between the east and the west here the east stands for the oriental ideology and the west and for the western philosophy or the ideology and this play is mainly focusing on this particular conflict as such 
if you try to find out the real development of indian drama i mean to say indian english drama it started with the publication of madhusudan dutt's play in 1871 it was titled as is this called civilization and this was a landmark in the development or the real development of indian english drama in this soil so here we also talk about the other translated versions like ratnavali it was translated in 1859 and sarmista it was translated in uh, 1859 into english but it was originally written in bangla and uh, these three plays that i just mentioned they are also associated with krishna mohan banerji as i talked about his uh, play persecuted published in 1813 so these are the other three plays going to his credit as such so let us uh, switch over to the another uh, important stage in the history of indian english drama actually indian english drama exhibited its maturity and genius after a long period of time we need to come into the 20th century to recognize this uh, importance and this real sense of maturity and the genius of course the pre independence period also witness the emergence of many significant and influential playwrights in english i just name a few like rabindranath tagore t p kailasam or bindo ghosh a s p iyer bharti sarabhai and a few more so here you have some of the very significant authors but let us talk about a trio a significant contribution to the development of indian english drama was made by a trio and that trio is nothing but harindranath chatopadhyay rabindranath tagore and sir arvindo ghosh these three have made a huge contribution to the real development of indian english drama and they have also given vividness a variety and several experiments were also done by them in the course of writing various dramas as written by them so these are the poets and they are also the dramatists who gained certain reputation in the course of time in the realm of literature and with the name of uh, harindranath chatopadhyay all these literary figures were mostly known in the uh, world as big 3 so big 3 means harindranath chatopadhyay rabindranath tagore and shri arbindo ghosh and this credit is given to them because of their valuable contribution to the indian english drama now i would like to talk about a very selected few playwrights writing in english and originally or basically from india and the first of them is rabindranath tagore yesterday also we mentioned about him as a poet as a novelist or a fiction writer or as a short story writer but today i would like to focus on his uh, ability as a playwright and his contributions also as you know he was awarded the nobel prize for literature and he was considered as the epitome of indian spiritual heritage but uh, as i said yesterday also primarily he wrote his plays in bengali not only prose not only plays and short stories and poetry most of his literary creed is initially found in bengali language but later he realized that he should really translate at least some of them personally so that he will get international acclaim for that and he was quite successful in 
so primarily he wrote his plays in bengali language but later his plays were translated into english some of them he himself did and most of them were done by others also and some of the important plays contributed by him are chitra sacrifice the post office mukta dhara the cycle of spring the king of the dark chambers and so on there are so many actually but i have enlisted just a few of them then you have another name among the big 3 that is sri orbindo or sir orbindo his uh, lifetime duration is 1872 to 1950 was also one of the major indian english playwrights i would say he wrote five complete and six incomplete poetic plays during 1891 to 1916 the variety of periods ranging from uh, ancient greece to medieval india and the various places that he visited including iraq iran syria bhutan spain and norway are the major focus of his plays i would say all of his plays mostly revolve around poetry and romances so most of the plays that he wrote are poetic plays and some of the plays i would like to mention over here the wazirs of uh, basora perseus the deliverer prize of adur eric savitri and the fifth one is vavaduta so these are the five plays comprehensively completed plays are contributed by orbindo now let us talk in general about orbindo's contributions and how he has really created his own world of literature actually sir orbindo used the ancient legends to highlight the contemporary urge for freedom and its relations